It's very obvious that all of us when trying to learn Arduino have built a LED chaser at some point. And of course procedure for this is very straightforward. Just connecting one digital out pin for each LED and writing a code to execute the pattern. But if you observe carefully, one major disadvantage to this design is the limited amount of digital out pins. Even the Arduino Mega offers max of 54 such pins. This means what would happen if you want to build a bigger LED chaser of these many LEDs or an LED matrix of these many LEDs or a massive LED cube with these many LEDs. So that's what we'll be talking about in this video and I'll walk you through every step of it. So let's get started. To talk about the star of this project, it's going to be a shift resistor. And here I'm using SN74HC595, which is an 8-bit serial in parallel out shift resistor. And as always, let's begin with the data sheet. The first eye-catching point we observe is the operating voltage, which here is 2 volts to 6 volts, which in turn means we can easily use this IC with our Arduino that operates in 5 volts range. Then moving on to the pin diagram. Apart from VCC and ground pins, we find three very important pins for operating of this shift resistor. First, SRE, the serial data pin to load the serial data. Second, SRCLK, the serial clock pin to shift the serial data to the resistor. And third, RCLK, the load clock pin or latch pin to load the resistor data to the output. However, this working can easily be understood by taking a look at the example timing diagram. Here we find there is continuous serial clock, so let's not worry about it for a while. But we also see that whenever the clocks are given to the IC, the bit data is shifted by one bit with each clock from QA to QH, which of course are the output pins. With these three major pins, there are two more important pins. OE bar, the output enable pin. The bar on top of it signifies that it is an active low pin, that is, it is active when it is connected to ground. Hence, this pin displays the output when it is connected to ground and shuts off when it is not. And then we have clear bar pin, the clear pin, and as the name suggests, it clears the resistor memory when it is active and you guessed it right, it also is an active low pin. Due to functionality of these pins, enable pin is always connected to ground and the clear pin is always connected to VCC, at least for the sake of this video. Now let's get this boring theory out of our way and try bringing an actual circuit to life. Initially, let's build an 8-bit circuit to check its functionality. First fix the IC to the breadboard and then connect the LEDs in the bit order. That is, the cathode of the LED is connected to ground through a 220 ohm resistor and the anode is connected to the respective output from QA to QH. Then as discussed, connect the enable pin to ground and clear pin to VCC. Now connect the serial data pin to pin 2 of Arduino, serial clock to pin 4 and the load clock pin to pin 6 because this is how we'll be declaring them in the code. Finally, after connecting VCC to 5 volts and ground to ground of the Arduino, it's time to load up our Arduino IDE. For our initial code, we'll use the built-in function called shift out. This function takes the input of data pin, clock pin, bit order that is given by MSB first or LSB first, and finally the actual byte value that we want to send to the resistor. There are various uses and applications given for this function on the Arduino website. But here we shall discuss in context to achieve the goal of the video. But still, it is recommended to check it, link in the description box below. First, let's declare the pins as mentioned before and also add an integer LEDs which stores the value we want to send. For this test, Let's just try to send an 8-bit data in binary format and see if our LED arrangement gives the same output. Hence, assign the integer LEDs to any 8-bit binary value. 
Now to send this data, first we need to set the latch pin to high. Then we use the shift out function with the parameters data pin, clock pin, bit order that is LSB first in this case and finally the value LEDs. Finally, we need to pull the latch pin back to low. Once we save and load this code to our Arduino, we see that the LEDs do follow the same value we assigned to the variable. Also, you can see that QA has taken the MSB value of our data and QH has the LSB. This will be reversed if we change the bit order to MSB first in the function. Using this knowledge of the basics, we can write any pattern we want as we used to to design a chaser. To do that, this time let's create a separate function called update shift to perform the shift operation and move the three shift steps there. Now we just have to call this function rather than typing these three steps every time we want to send our data. To generate a pattern, we can give any values to our variable in binary, hexadecimal or even integer format. Just be aware of what you're doing. With combination of different values and some delays, we can create any pattern we want. So this is all about to use a shift register to have an 8-bit output. But what if you need more? What if you need several more pins to accommodate your project? This is where another magic pin, QH dash of the IC comes into play. This pin basically stores same value as of QH pin, but is a little back in time. Hence this pin is connected to data pin of the next shift register and same clocks are given to the second IC as of the first one. Basically they are just shorted with the first register. Also, now we need 8 more LEDs in the same manner as we had for the first IC. But in the coding part, the shift out function behaves very weird. If we use it in the same manner as before, it shifts only initial 8 bits to both the LEDs rather than entire 16 bit. There is a solution for this in Arduino website, but it seems very complicated. And with the growing Arduino community, a simpler solution does exist. That solution is Shift Out X library, which is available for download on Arduino website. And of course, its link in the description box below. This library basically allows you to daisy chain up to eight resistors and control them with a single command. For the code, first we need to add the required libraries shiftoutx.h and shiftpinnumber.h. And then, same as earlier, we need to declare all the pins globally. Now an important step, we have to declare a class for shift out as follows, latch pin, data pin, clock pin, bit order, number of resistors and also name this class. And of course you can name it whatever you want. After completing the setup section, now we can send the 16 bit data as earlier, but this time using the command shift out underscore 16 and entering the pins, bit order and finally the value. And then the sent value is displayed neatly with the LEDs. Pretty awesome, I guess. The 16 in the function name represents the 16 bit data we want to send to two of our resistors. So for three resistors, we can use underscore 24 and for four, it's underscore 32. And for anything greater, we can use underscore X. Also, you can design a pattern as we did earlier too. It's now only limited to your imaginations. That's it. I think that is how you can have infinite digital out pins for your Arduino by utilizing just three of its pins. And for rather demanding projects, we can even use MOSFETs with these shift resistors to perform the switching. If you would like to try out any of the circuits shown in the video, all the schematics and the code is available in the description below. I really hope you like this video and most importantly, learn something new. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and do follow me on Instagram so that you can tag me in any of your projects you build, give me a feedback, ask me questions and provide me with any suggestions that you have. Until then, peace out.